Right, good evening. And you find me now on one of my random videos that are going to come up midweek, doing things other than the, the actual outings into the Lake District or whatever. And tonight we're going to look at the workflow once I get back from having gone out to get the the um, the files onto the computer, into Lightroom, etc. I'm not actually going to cover editing any of the images, but just the workflow around, including how the files are named, where they're stored, keywording, etc. So that's the scope of this video. So why not stay and watch? You may enjoy it. You may learn something. You may not. But let's see where we go from here. Right, so obviously our first task is to get all the images off the camera and onto the computer so we can start doing whatever we're going to do with them. Now there are three methods, well three that I'm aware of, for get transferring images. One is wirelessly from the camera to the computer. The other is by connecting the, the camera to the computer via a wire. And the third method, which is the one I use, is to take the SD card out of the camera and put it in a reader connected to the computer. And you see here uh, on David's iMac, we have iOS or ISO Digital, not ISO, EOS Digital, for, and that's the SD card. Um, and if we double click on there, and then double click into there and then into this folder we find 72 files that were taken yesterday often there's more on because i'd got back from iceland and this was the first outing the cards were very full so i actually obviously i dealt with all the images etc so i reformatted the cards so these this was the the first uh, out in since the cards were reformatted so there's only images from yesterday's walk on there so we're going to copy all those onto the computer and on the computer i have which is a working directory shall we say a directory called photo library um, once images are are dealt with are processed etc they are copied onto an external drive uh, and also backed up. They are still accessible from Lightroom, but they're not clogging up the main iMac, which only has a limited amount of space on it anyway. So you see here, we have three subfolders. We have a DNG versions folder, a still camera originals folder, and a video cameras original folder. Now, obviously, these are from the 5D Mark IV, which I class as a stills camera. So we need to go into still camera originals. Um, it's from the 5D and it's in 2024. And in the third month, which is March, which we are now in. And we're going to create a new folder and we're going to name it 2024 underscore 03 underscore 18. And that is how I store all my images. They're all in a date order format. Um, there's folders for a particular, for each camera, there'll be a folder for the year within that folders for the month and then individual folders for the day. Now, some people don't like this because they find it difficult to then find images. That, can they remember what date it was taken on? Probably not. I don't know whether I could. But that's why I use keywords, etc., and use other methods to be able to find my images. So we'll open that folder, we'll select all these, and we'll copy them across. It, it just suits my way of thinking. I like things, it may not appear that when some people see me, but I, I like things in order. And to me, to put them in date order is keeping them in order and then tagging other information on to be able to find them is my way of doing things. It's not to everybody's liking, 
but it is to my liking. So we'll just wait for those to finish copying across. Right, and there the finished copying across. So there we have all the files now on the iMac within this directory called photo library within the still cameras originals. So the next stage, and I was trying to wrap my brain why I started doing this, but we'll, we'll set the process going and then we'll talk about it. We'll go into Adobe DNG converter and we click convert. Now this is set up to convert any files within the still cameras original subfolder. Now obviously because it's only a tech working folder and then things are moved, there's only the 72 images in there. So these are all being converted to DNGs. I was trying to wrap my brain why I do this. I've always done this. And the only reason I've come up with, I'm into the habit, so I'm going to carry on that, is that with the DNG, you can embed various information within the file and you don't actually need a sidecar file, which perhaps with the the Canon files you would need star sidecar files with the information that would could easily get lost and separated. But there we see it's finished, so we'll quit to that, and then we'll go to the next um, step in my workflow. Right. So the next step is to geotag and keyword etc all my images that I've taken. And if we open this software here called Photolinker, that's the software that we're going to do. And we'll make it full screen. And then we'll go and upload the photos. Load photos from file. And there we go. There are the files 240318. So we can click on that. And if we click open, that will start loading the 72 files. Now, I think this is very good software and I like it and have used it for quite a while. I'm reluctant to totally recommend it. Um, I don't know whether it's available. I don't think it's available for Windows. It's a Mac only product. And as far as I'm aware, it's not being upgraded. So I just have this feeling at some point it's not going to work when they upgrade the operating system. It has so far but one never knows so but this is what I use and here we have our um, 72 images right so what we're going to do to start off if we just click on one the first one we'll see that it's got a file name image underscore 5002.dng which is now that's the name given it by a canon uh, the just sequential if we go on to the next one it's 5003 um, time digitized 12 18 18 on Monday the 18th of March but the creation time we've got 200950 on Tuesday the 19th of March now that is the time and date when the DNG file was created so what we're going to do is going to select all the files and we're going to photo and show date and time copier and we're going to um, copy the original date and time and we're going to cro copy it to the file creation date and set that and now we'll see up there it's saying 72 photos with unsaved changes so we've affected 72 images so if we now just select one, we see we've got the same time digitized and creation time the same. Right, so we're going to select all the files again. We'll just get rid of, we'll minimize those. And then we've got to write various information. Now all this information is set in the camera and it puts it all in. So we've got rights information, copyright notice, copyright a url etc but we don't have a copyright status so we've selected them all and we're going to call them copyrighted because you can't set that in the camera and we can't set the owner which we're going to set as me so that's all the rights and 
and then there's the embedded photographer and contact information that's all in there so that's already in from the camera so we're going to leave that and now what we're going to do is geotag them right what i might do is i'll go through the process the whole process recording the whole thing but then i might um zoom through various bits um, as it may get a bit boring watching them all so we're just going to select the first image and we'll see down here maps so this brings up a map and the red dots are where the images were taken now the canon 5d does record um geotag information so so what we're going to do is and the one with the sort of star is the one that's selected now all these first six were all taken on the same spot now i know they were taken at this corner of the graveyard so what i'm going to do is right click and then geotag to point now that geotag moves them slightly from where the canon recorded it because sometimes the recording does can go a bit hard um, all over the place um, but what you'll see is it's put certain information in down here so if we go to the click on to this one and I know all these were taken at the same spot they were taken um, there so you'll see they're blank and if we just right click on there geotag to point and it puts the information on what I forgot to do on the first one and I'll do on this one now is we'll set the image direction so that's pointing the direction the camera was pointed so we need to go back to these and the direction we're pointing was to the church here oh no let's undo that click the wrong one set image direction so that's there and then we went oh, right that can be annoying sometimes with the map so we'll go back these are taken the same place as the first one so geotag to point and then set image direction right so that's it done for those so what we'll do is we'll just select these first ones all at the church you see they're selected on the map and what we're going to do is fill in the rest of the information on here for these so the world region is europe um gbr country now it comes up with united kingdom which i don't like so i'm going to change that to england and the county is cumbria city is manistee and we're going to call the sub location now this is up to me i'm going to call it um new lens as you can see it's cut it's coming up with various um, information that I've used before, but I'm going to call it Newman's Church, which where I was. So we'll enter that, and then this is the the idea is the first one is the location where you. Were, the image was captured from and this is the location of the image but i normally it's very rare actually um do them different and in a sense that they are the same anyway so it was sorry country it was england cumbria city manistee and newlands church 
Right, so we're going to stop the recording there. I'll go through and do the rest and then I'll come back and we'll talk about the other information I would put on in these. So, right, we'll just stop the recording. Right, we've now been through and all the locations created and shown have been done for all the images. So now we're going to fill in this bit at the top, photograph description. Right. So we'll just do it for these on the recording. So um, I've got various categories. If we click down now, we can see the now buildings and grounds really applies to this one, these images of Newlands Church. Um, yeah, I mean for the others, I would probably put in landscape, but not not for these. These are a building and grounds. The event. I really only use event when it's, um, say, a photographic workshop um, that's over a few days or on holiday and that. But uh, that. people shown, no, there isn't. But and then the important thing for being able to find things is keywords. So add the keyword new lens church oh ch church I'll also add the key, just the keyword uh, church which we'll see is probably that church I don't think there's particularly any other keywords I want to add um, on this one apart from We'll see here that it's got a rating of one. Now, I, this is a, a system I've developed fairly recently. If ever I use a filter, I always rate it. Now, if you use one filter, it's one star. If you use two filters, it's two star. Um, we'll see if we look at one of these, that one there, that's got two stars, so it had two filters on. Um, I've got to remember what filters I had, had on but I know I did happen to have on at this time the polarizer. So we'll add on case polarizer. And then we're going to create title. We're going to leave blank for now. We'll come back to title later on. But the headline is New Lunds Church. Whoops help if I could spell and we'll just create a description straightforward a view of Newlands uh, and that that could be anything so that's the ones done for these I'll go ahead um, and do the ones for the next few and then we'll come uh, well what we'll do is actually we've done that and then periodically I do this click on right changed tags now this actually we can see it counting down there at the top that actually writes all this data into the DNG file so whenever I I have the DNG file, I have all this information. So I think we'll stop the recording there and then we'll move on to the next step and I'll just go and do this for the rest of the images um, but not record it. So we'll see you a little bit later. Right, well you now find me in Lightroom and we're going to import the images into Lightroom. So if we go through to import and oh it's bringing up the various um, addresses so I find if I click on here and go to my last address of import there we go 240318 and there are all the images and right we're gonna import them and that will then bring them all in now, while they're imported, it, various things are actually done to the images. So, 
they're all imported. So if we just select the one, if we're going to um, the develop mode, we'll see that if we come down to lens correction, it's already got remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. So that's done automatically. I've got a preset to do that. Um, the other thing in the detail, no, it's not in detail. Um, I'm trying to think where it is. Effects. We've got a slight vignette that's automatically applied. Obviously, we can go and remove that, but that is done as part of um, the import. So if we go back to the library view, these are all the images that we've brought in. You can see it's processing then it's building one to one previews. Um, but there are a number of things I do to all the images before I start um, uh, processing them, etc. Um, let's just, if we look at the keyword list, um, oh, there's some there. Um, scope, right, we see reservoir, because I put that on for one of the things, and scope back. Now, these are individual keywords. Um, now, scope back, I will move into, if I can find it, lakes, rivers, waterfalls. So, if we go there, there's scope back in there, and that wants to go in England. So, we'll put that in England, and then within England, it wants to be in the Lake District. So I've got all the rivers, etc. there. Obviously, there are a number of words that have come while I've been in Iceland that I haven't properly filed away, because normally there's only a few headings there, and then you go into there, and then there are various other things. So, so that's the, the point of the keywording that I did in the previous software. So um, if, well, yeah, so we can, if we go on to, if we go back into rivers, lakes, um, England, as uh, the Lake District, Lake District, and then we could say we want all the ones from Angleton. So we'll click on there, and that then will bring up all the images I've got from Angleton. So that's what, how I find things by the use of keywords. Um, so we'll go back to catalog and previous imported. So that's all the one and we're going to highlight them all. And I have a plugin that I use. So file, plugin extras, and there's one called search, replace, append, transfer. So we're going to do that. And it should come up with a little window. Yep, there we go. Process 72 images. So I want to do the transfer copy. Now I've got various things set up here. Um, the top one, there was nothing in the event, so it's um, we're not going to do that. Now we're going to alter and get the file name into the title the title field so we can see that's what's before on this particular image and that's what's going to be after so we're going to process 72 images and that's it done it's now got the before and after are the same now the ipc category which is buildings and grounds so if we go back to look at um no, it's not bringing the image up there that's the that's the image on image one. But you see, if we go back to image 72, which should be showing something else, it's showing landscape. We'll go back to image one. The problem, one of the shortfallings of Lightroom, in my opinion, is that not all items are searchable. So the IPC category is not a searchable item. And I want to be able to search on this so i copy it into a, t a field called job and the job is 
I feel that I can actually do something with in Lightroom. It's not the ideal title for, for what's going in there, but we're going to do that. We're going to process 72 ones and we'll see that the, the if we go back to that one, it's got the landscape on as we see. And then we're also going to put into the IPTC subject code. Again, that one, it's lost in the mist of times a bit, but I do this anyway. So let's do that. That's 72 items copied. Right, well, we're now going to go just highlight this one back because we're going to work on this title and we're going to do search and replace. So we're going to search for image, IMG underscore. So we find that there. And we're going to replace that with photo 25 hash. So the 5002 is the number, sequential number given by Canon. And obviously that rolls over once it gets to 9999. It will go back to 0001. And what it what will happen when we get to 999 and then start on the next one it will be called photo 25. now photo 20s are all from the 5d if it was photo in the teens that would be from the 70d or if it's photo 30 something that's from the dgi uh, pocket if it's photo 40 something that is the DJI Mini 2. That's how I number um, and give a title to all my images. It maybe doesn't mean something, but as I said, maybe it's the OCD kicking in, but I like that sort of way of doing it. So we'll click that, we'll process them, and we'll see they're all done. So if we now close that, we've done everything we want to do there, and we can see we've got the numbers there. Now what I am going to do, I'm going to write them all as one, and obviously I can change that in the future, and I'm going to click press six, which will do them as red. Now if you look down here, we've got the various colors. Now red means get label to basics applied, i.e. the basics are applied, the keyworded, They've got the, the basics, the um, the lens corrections and the vignette, etc. Now, the only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename all the files. And in Lightroom, if we press F2, it brings up the naming. And we've got a, a preset um, file name in DWL file naming. And we'll see the custom text is DWL, which is my initials. And the example of what it will be is there. DWL hyphen 2403.18 hyphen 5002.dng. So this is how I actually name the files. Rather than sticking with the original name given by Canon. So the first thing is, is my initials. The second thing is the date the image was captured. And then the final one is the sequential number given by Canon. And hopefully it means that there shouldn't be any e duplicates. Potentially, if I was using two cameras on the same day and the number sequence happened to clash, that could cause a problem, but um, we'll just ignore that for time. So we'll do that and we'll name them all and now this ready to start processing so we've got 72 images um, and they're all ready to process start processing so i'm going to stop the recording there i'm going to do a bit of processing and then i will catch up with you to show you how i use the colors as i say we've set them all red here but i do use the colors to keep track of the images of where i've got to so as i say we'll stop the recording now and we'll see you a little bit later. Right, and here we are still in Lightroom, working through processing these images. 
and you can see the various colours and these are the colours that I use to keep track of where I am and you might have thought well there was 72 images where, where have they all gone well let me explain so red as we see is as we click on the set label to basics applied so these three are the basics applied now the yellow is stacked so all these don't really look yellow light green whatever what we call stacked now you might have become aware I've mentioned it on various videos when I take an image I tend to take three just in case one is slightly bird or whatever so I can pick the best so if we look here this is a stack of three images so if we just click on that to unstack them we'll see that those are the three images that were taken at the same time just one after the other i mean and what i do is i would normally go in and compare them and then see which one i prefer and then select that one and the two that I'm not going to use get set to purple and purple is NFP no further processing so what I'm saying is those I'm not going to process any further whereas this one is the one that I've picked to process further so that's what the yellow is now the green is what I've I've started to process and let's see what does green say green says quick edit so all these have had a quick edit and I've up the um, star rating to two which means I'm quite happy with them all that they are reasonable ish images and I'm gonna further process them so I've done a quick process and I'm gonna take them to the next stage now what's that next stage well, if we've got to here we've got the ones of st john's church and we've basically got two um, compositions there's the one here where we the side on view there's three there and then the end on view there's one two and then three there so what i do is i look at the ones that are the green and i pick out which are the ones i actually want to process further and i'll give those a star rating of three and the ones that i'm not going to process any further i'll leave them at star rating two but i will change them to purple which is the no further processing so these two i've processed a bit further you can see this one i've changed the um, crop factor I've done further processing and the same with this one although they may get more um, but blue means that it is final version although as with everything the final version may get tweaked or whatever so that's how I keep a track on it obviously uh, if the red and the uh, no I've got to stack them to pick which of the three is the one that I want to take further on um, it could be that I stack them and they go straight to purple because basically they're they're not very good they may be blurred or whatever which occasionally happens and they would stay star rating one as purple or they may even go down to zero star rating um, be stacked and all be purple so that's the way I use the colors and in a sense that finishes the point of this video to to look at the workflow what the workflow is getting them into lightroom how i keep control of where i am as i said it's not about the individual editing on this occasion um, editing is not one of my strong points that i may do uh, another video in the future all right so that brings this video to an end and let's just bring up that image which you will have seen I would imagine seen on the video that was up at the weekend of my walk up 
s how up oh, the back scope back uh, scoop back scope I think it's scope back as I say pronunciation is not one of my best but I hope you enjoyed this video if you have please click the thumbs up if you like what I'm doing why not subscribe if you've got any comments please do comment if you've got any thoughts just comment I do appreciate all comments what you thought about this video whether I was just wasting my time or whether it was quite informative whether it was quite useful giving you some indicators of how to maybe keep track of things what other random videos you would like me to do as I say I'm going to continue at a weekend putting up ones of the actual going out and capturing the images whether that be a walk in the Lake District uh, maybe in the future I'm going to do a bit more in the Yorkshire Dales or when I go on a photo workshop although I need to get better at that um, the one of Iceland although the images there were some very good images that the video in fell apart a bit but yeah any comments there are much appreciated so I'm not quite sure when this is going up this is um, recording this on Tuesday the actual video of the walk all being well will be going up on Sunday and this should come up sometime the following week as I say these are going to be midweek and there isn't necessarily going to be one every week and they are a bit random I haven't fully thought this out yet I just thought I'd do this one and there's maybe a couple of reviews I want to do on equipment type reviews I'll put those up so there may be one or two a month that we'll put up in addition to our weekly ones so hopefully you've enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next video